does God delegate spiritual inspiration and grace to celestial angels and other souls more developed in love? Okay. Um, well, let's define grace compared to spiritual inspiration. All right. Grace to me is the part of God that God, is God's love. Mm. And God does not delegate grace okay. to any spirit in the spirit world. That doesn't mean that these spirits don't have a grace of their own. Mm. It just means that the grace that comes from God, which is all about the reception of God's love and, and forgiveness that comes with the grace of God's love, that can only be given by God and no other spirit. It, there is no intermediary that can be established for the reception of grace into the human soul. Okay. Grace comes directly from God and enters the human soul through the connection with the Holy Spirit. There is no other way in which a human can receive grace from God. And God doesn't pass grace to a third party in order to get it to you. Mm, mm. And in fact, the laws are governing the use of the Holy Spirit, which is a conduit, if you like, between God and us, govern it in such a way that it can only connect between God and uh, one person at, in terms of a soul. It can connect to millions of them at the same time but it won't go via that person to another. Mm. Does that make sense? It can only be a direct connection between yeah. God and your soul, yeah. God and my soul, not between God, your soul, and then to my soul. Mm. That does not occur ever. Mm. So the Holy Spirit is only capable of this connection between God on one end and one human soul, of, or billions of human souls, on the other end. Does that make sense? Mm. And it's a one-to-one -one connection in the sense that God feels everything you feel. And if you're open to it, you will be able to feel as much as you're able to cope with of what God feels. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. There's the expression of God's grace. And God does not delegate that to any spirit or any other living person, mm. including Jesus. Mm. Mm. Right? And the Holy Spirit is not an entity, so it's not even delegated to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. The Holy Spirit is an energy conduit between God, and it's mm. one of God's energies that allows the transmission of grace, mm. or transmission of divine love from God to the human soul. The second part of the question, though, is about inspiration. And the reality is God always gives inspiration via spirits of higher development okay. than ourselves, and sometimes even from spirits of even lower development mm. than ourselves, and people on earth of lower development. It just depends on their gifts that they have at the time. So, for example... Let's say I have the gift of playing music and I'm often just inspired when I'm playing music. I might have darkness about me in other aspects of my life, but when I'm in my music, I can feel this connection with God. Mm. I can feel inspired, right? In that place, spirits will inspire me to write things mm. with my music. And they might be spirits who are in a dark place or in a bright place, depending on my condition and what I attract at the time. But I will receive inspiration from anybody in the spirit world and that will inspire what I write for my music. Now, if my condition is such that I desire to be inspired by people who have a, a greater condition of love than myself, then there's a high likelihood I will attract such spirits mm. in my day-to-day -day life. But again, it has to be a sincere attraction. Mm. It can't be something that I just think in my mind. Mm. It has to be what I desire in my soul. It has to be a pure, unadulterated desire for inspiration. Now, God often delegates this inspiration. And in fact, God inspires us in many different directions, not directly, but by asking spirits who are close, more closely connected with God to give us the inspiration that God cannot share with us because we refuse to connect to God. And while we allow a connection with the spirit, but don't allow the connection with God, God is asking the Spirit to try to help us yeah. to connect to God. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. So God is using all of the tools at God's disposal. And there are many hundreds and hundreds of tools. Uh, in, my case, in, in my opinion, there's many millions of tools that God has, a, has mm. at his disposal in order to give us inspiration to move us in a direction that's positive for our soul. Now, some of these tools are the laws of the universe that God's already created. The law of attraction is a tool, for example, the law of cause and effect. The law of attraction is a great tool because it, it causes our soul to attract to us events that tell us whether we were in or out of harmony mm. with love when we acted. The, the law of cause and effect is a great law too because it tells us that if we do something that results in harm to ourselves, 
then obviously something in the doing must have been unloving. And that, that tells us, that gives us a message. But then God also inspires creatures around us, not, not only um, other, other humans or, and other spirits who are basically human anyway, but also creatures around mm. us to inspire us. So, so, for example, if my house is full of vermin, um, God is telling me something through that process. Yeah, yeah. Something to do with my soul yeah. that I can think upon and, and reflect upon. Yeah. If I notice a bird attacking the window, God is telling me something through this process. It's just a bird operating with the effect of my own soul attacking the window, but it's telling me something about my own soul and its condition. Mm. And if I'm willing to be open to experiencing what it's all about, I'll find out the answer to why that's occurring. But greater inspiration than that is directly from spirits who are our friends, mm. you know, who love us and care for us and who are our friends. That kind of inspiration can be very much more direct and also very much more clear in its inspiration. And so God often guides spirits who are in higher development than ourselves to, to try to connect with us by dropping thoughts into our mind mm. and also by if, they are, if our mind is open to such things and also by helping us with different events in our lives to see different things, see different books, see, yes. have different experiences yes. so that we become aware of something that we weren't previously aware of. Mm. So God is always inspiring us in that mm. direction. And when we personally shut down our relationship with God, God then reverts to everything else at God's disposal to try to help open that relationship again. Wow. And that's what God's doing with all humanity right at the yeah. present. Mm. Yeah. So it's a beautiful thing that firstly God's grace only comes directly from God to us because mm. then we're assured that this is a direct connection with God. But it's also a beautiful thing that God asks all of the people who are connecting with God to ins to, to help inspire us mm, mm. To, to embrace this relationship mm. with God. So, you know, God's got so many tools at his disposal that um, the most person, people on earth have no awareness whatsoever of the, a number of tools at the disposal. And, in fact, most people on earth sort of view them as just normal events happening or something yeah. like that. You know, they don't sort of see them as mm. God-directed inspirations. Mm, mm. But the reality is... If you could see what was operating in the spirit world, you would see all of these God-directed inspirations occurring at every single moment for every single individual. Wow. Whoever lives on the planet and also who lives in the spirit world. Wow, yeah. yeah. Does the same thing happen, happen to um, some of the darker spirits? Are they helped Yep, uh, similarly? exactly the same way. Mm. Exactly the same way. They can't connect to God because of their condition mm. and their refusal to desire such a relationship. But oh, there's all these external events all happening all at the same time, all these laws, all these spirits coming back and forth, trying to influence them mm. into a state of becoming aware. Mm. So God never gives up on anyone. No, no. God's like, you know, there's no such thing as a person who's completely, you know, discommunicated from God mm. or excommunicated mm. from God. No, no such thing can ever exist, no. in fact. And... Uh, and God never excommunicates anybody from having a relationship with God under any circumstances, but God always governs the relationship through the law. Mm. So laws govern all relationships. Mm. But, and, and for us to have a relationship with God, we obviously need to embrace the laws that such relationships involve. But, uh, but even if we choose to not do that, God is still trying to communicate with us through all of the other parts of the universe giving us inspiration in all sorts of directions yeah. to try and lead us back to God. Yeah. Yep. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, it is wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> thank goodness. <laughs> yeah, thank goodness. Like, without it, the majority of us, including myself, would never have got to God, right? <laughs> yeah.